Meeting Michelle today to go shopping, so I'm trying to get through my morning activities quick. It's not working. All the kitties are doing good, but I just got to tell you that I'm really bummed this morning. Somebody knocked my favorite fountain off the platform back there, and there's this huge rock behind it, and um, it hit the rock and it's in pieces. I, yes, I cried over a fountain. I can only assume it was raccoons, but we won't know for sure, right? Um, I watched it out the kitchen window cooking dinner with the pretty light we put in it this year and it made me smile. I'm bummed. It's hard to have nice things sometimes. It came from Guardian Angel, but I'll never be able to replace that pretty cobalt glazed, you know, um, thing. They're expensive and, yeah. Good morning, Panther. Hey, bud. How are you? Here's my pretty eyes. I don't see any other disasters this morning. And one of my red canna lilies is flowering. Those attract hummingbirds, so I should start paying attention for that. Gray Gray, good morning. Hi. They had a um, bigger truck in there yesterday to haul stuff away. A l bigger as in longer. They're getting close on it. Getting it, you know the debris removed I guess smoothing leveling planning but they have put up the silt fence pretty much all the way around which is the right answer especially on the back side of the property where the creek is I don't know how good it does but I'm sure it does a little good on keeping stuff from going into the creek we're out here a little late it's 925 Late only because, you know, I'm meeting Michelle. I just messaged her and said, let's shoot for 10.45 instead of uh, 10.30. We'll still probably take one lap off of the track to make up a little bit, little bit of time. I promise we're only doing two laps around the track today. And we're not going to get hung up picking up trash today either. Promise. We are wearing our weight vests though. And we're still fasting. How many hours are we at now? It's got to be. It's got to be close to 60, 58, something like that. Like it's 60 hours. Yeah. So yes, Don and I watched the earnings call. Yeah. And yes, we all know that you guys want to know if we're going to trade Ruby for a new X since. Or the Y. Or the Y, since since we can transfer FSD, and Don and I said we'd talk about it, but we're not talking about it this morning. You know, you got to order third quarter, right? Not take delivery third quarter right. necessarily, although they're so fat. Deliveries are so fast right now that. Well, we'll get the details. Yeah, but Don made well. I'm the one that said maybe the Y instead of Ruby because um, we'd get, you know, start out with a fresh warranty and we'd pick up hardware four and, um, you know, there's a couple of improvements that have been made, like the lithium battery instead of the um, lead acid battery for the system. So, you know, there are some reasons why that might be nice, but cons on that would definitely be the interest rate. Um, Factoring into to it versus uh, well, we don't want to pay off the Y, right? Basically, I think it's like 
just under 2% interest rate on that thing. Yeah, we have a really good interest rate on the Y, and that was by design because we felt like the money would make us more money someplace else than buying the Y outright. So that was kind of on purpose. Um, you know, so I don't know. We're going to talk about it some more, but don't be surprised if we don't order a car third quarter. <laughs> uh, we still have the order on the Cybertruck. I still very much want to add the Cybertruck to our fleet. And um, Don didn't want an early one anyway, so that surely wouldn't be before next year, even if uh, we our number somehow came up. But Because we did put the deposit down at the announce. As soon as they opened up the window, we put the deposit down. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, I, it was the first time, though, that I, that I considered it um, on Ruby since, you know, we had said we were, you know, no way we want to go get a new X and have to pay 15K for FSD when we have it on the car we have now for, I don't know what we paid overall between the AP at the purchase and the FSD upgrade nine to 12 months later, but not 15K. <laughs> I don't know. And then there's also, you know, the hardware four cars are a little software limited right now. Uh, even Elon said it one time this week. I forget who he said it to, but even he said they were trying to catch up on the software that the hardware three cars were actually, I think his exact words were, the hardware three cars were exactly more capable than the hardware four cars were right now, but not because that would be the way it would be long term, but because they're building the software. So I don't know. I don't want a less capable car necessarily, at least not Ruby and the Y we could tolerate it for a while, you know, but not, not Ruby girl. So yeah, interesting. Time will tell. Time will tell. I will, you know, just say that if anyone is not currently a Tesla owner, which most of our friends are Tesla owners, and you put in an order for a Tesla, Don and I would appreciate during this referral win window where we can get a few referral, we can get a few referral miles for supercharging for jewels. I, I am not greedy. I only, you know, one would be nice. Like I don't, I'm not trying to get, you know, every person out there to use our referral code, but one referral would, would sure come in handy on getting back and forth to UNC Charlotte. So I never took the referral code out of the dis video description because, um, I figured uh, it would come back around again. I figured they would end it for a while and it would come back around again. And it's also our, we use this Tesla Fi, let us pick a referral code and we use the same one for Tesla Fi. So, um, I might should make that a little more clear in the video description and just have it. But anyway, um, I don't know. Did we hear anything else interesting about the, on the earnings call last night? I mean, that was certainly the thing that got most got my attention. Well, I don't well, know if do we. Elon is very basically telling people buy stock. It's going to blow. He's basically pretty much saying that Tesla stock is going through the roof because of both the uh, automation, the AI, the self-driving, the energy. He said, uh, I guess he was inferring that today it's going to get hit and it was down overnight. I haven't looked today, but you might have run out there and grabbed some shares. Right. Yeah, this was another window for purchasing, I guess. But like Don said, we haven't looked this morning. It was close to 300. It was up at 2. I think I saw 296 sometime this week. I did appreciate him saying that he appreciated all of the little investors. Yeah, he, did. he said thanks to all the little Yeah, the way he said it sounded super sincere to me. Not that I've ever thought he wasn't sincere when he's spoken, but sounded super sincere and I know as someone that's purchase stock and two two well, sort of three but two cars and you know have been there through not the whole journey but a good part of the journey that um i appreciated him taking a minute to acknowledge all the little people out there that invest in tesla uh, along with the uh, you know the the big people don said you mentioned kathy yeah, kathy at ark invest yeah 
and uh, I didn't hear what he said, but in some positive way. I was working on my Legos and listening at the same time. <laughs> yeah, well, so I caught glimpses of what he said, I guess. Yeah, well, she's done numerous videos on the outlook for Tesla because of Optimus and FSD and the Robotaxi and Energy. Yeah, she's actually understands the bit Tesla business. Yeah, it's more than a car company. Everybody, all the talking heads, all the analysts on that call, all Wall Street people, they just think Tesla is just a car company. Just like GM, just like Ford, all those others. They have no idea that there is nothing in Tesla other than they happen to build a product that has wheels and tires. There's no, no commonality between them and any other automobile company. Well, at least not any of the major ones. Yeah. And so they just, they don't get it. Yeah, another th takeaway that I had was I thought it was a very politely phrased question, not some immediate attack question. When they asked him if his new XAI company would compete with Tesla and that of investors that realized the AI potential of Tesla software, if that was actually going to hurt their position because XAI would be competing with Tesla. And Elon said, actually, not true, that it would be competitive, that he wanted to hire some really good AI people to come to work for Tesla, and they wouldn't. But they said they'd come to work for a startup. And I don't know why that is or who that was, but... Right, yeah. Don said stock options would be might be a factor. So... Um, Elon went the XAI route to grab up the people he thought were the best people and that he thought it would still be good for Tesla obviously you know if Elon's uh, running both things it's not going to be bad for Tesla I think I feel comfortable on that well, but it but it was nice how the person asked and how Elon answered yeah well the thing is switch sides with me um, Tesla could license, Elon talked about licensing FSD. Right, he did. That was another big thing, too. Well, it, that license stuff goes both ways. A, XAI could legitimately license to Tesla any I, AI stuff it comes up with. There's, there's no problem. You know, you can license it to company A for $1 a, a copy and license it to company C for five thousand dollars a copy right you can do that now the stockholders may not appreciate it but right now Elon's the main stockholder so he can do what the hell he wants right yeah that's that's a good point and uh, yeah so Elon said they were in very early negotiations with a major OEM about licensing FSD um, and then of course everyone wonders who that would be Oh, I think it's got to be Ford. You think they would give up Blue Cruise for... Oh, I think absolutely. Ford has announced, and they already have done a press release and say they're only going to do two and three driver assistance, level two or three. They're not shooting for four, which is autonomous geofence, and then five is, you don't even have to have a steering wheel type situation. They, they said that, and, you know, Elon talked about the... the the thing he said this was he said yesterday again this was not as easy as he thought he thought this was going to be bing bang boom when he first started fsd all those years ago no big deal but every time developing Elon it thought that developing uh full self-driving was going to be easier than it was or wasn't going to be this tough nut to crack but every time he's cracked one nut he found a, a bigger harder nut and um he said again yesterday that this FSD thing is really, really hard. And it's uh, taken a lot of data. And really, you know, it's cost billions of dollars to do the modeling, uh, all that neural net stuff. You know, once you have the software, it, it compute is still, and the data gets to be a problem. So Tesla's in a unique position that they can do all that. And they have all that available. So. If you wanted to start, even if you were well along in your FSD, you're developing your own self-driving stuff, you, you probably learned how hard it is by now. And you probably go back to your, 
board of directors to say, hey, this SFD thing, it's going to cost you another several billion dollars. Why don't you see what kind of deal Tesla will give you? Right. I mean, you talk about fiduciary responsibility. That's the kind of stuff you've got to do. Sure. That makes sense. So I guess time will tell if somebody signs up. I don't think the dominoes would fall quite as quickly as they did with Nax, but I think there would be, if one falls, a few might fall. Well, I think after it gets regulatory approval and it Tesla does the robo feet, then it'll just, then the dominoes will just, it'll be like a snowball. Sure, sure. But we could use another early adopter. Right. More data for the fleet right. to help improve it. Um, Elon said the biggest thing holding back the completion of full soft driving. Oh, there's a little baby bunny. And that's not exactly how he said it, but he says it's a uh, trained programming skill. So, you know, they may hire people, to, and I totally appreciate that because they may hire people to come in to work on FSD, but I bet you got to be in the job for a year before you're worth anything. And I don't care how God's gift to programming you are because we used to bring people onto our product at IBM and it really didn't matter if they were testing, developing, providing support or writing the documentation. Um, they really weren't very useful right away. Yeah. They really weren't. We used to tell people we would hire for software support. Look, if you only want to stay for six months or a year, this, you know, really just let us know because we're going to put in a year to train you and we'd really like you to stay for at least another year. Not stuff I guess probably legally you can do, but maybe you could put that in some contracts because it's very expensive to train up people on complicated pro pro products. And then if you train them up and they leave, you know, you're basically, you're really, it's not a good situation. And we had that happen a few times on the support team for InfoMan. Just get them to where they would be starting to do something productive and then they'd leave. Um, of course, I don't feel like IBM necessarily nurtured the skill that we had sometimes. They treated us like we were a cash cow and um, didn't acted like they didn't care. They didn't invest in our product. They sort of acted like they didn't care. But gave us a headcount. Yeah, even though we had brought in more revenue and were more reliable than other products that they were looking into, they just had to switch off the mainframe for the help desk and. Anyway, that's water under the bridge, but I, I could relate to getting trained people to do autopilot is hard. I could definitely re uh, relate to that. Now, this was the big truck that was up there yesterday. I'm going to go so far as to say is I think this could be the last load. I think it's possible. That's a big, that is a lot of cubic feet. Don got out and we parked and it says power limited, okay to drive, vehicle may not restart after this drive. Huh. That could be 12 volt. It could be 12 volt. We'll Let's think 12 volt and not the big battery. Let's pop the frunk then. Right, right, yeah, popping the frunk, lift it up just a little bit in case we need to jump it make things easier okay I um, went into service mode we have one alert What's it say? a repeated isolation failure in drive isolation degradation So I don't know, I'll take a picture of that and we'll Google it. Uh, like I said, it can have all kinds of different messages when the 12 volts going bad and hopefully that's all it is. But Jules is still fully under warranty, so no worries if it's not. And the battery is three, it's three years old literally here today. What's today, the 20th? Yeah. Today's the uh, third, third birthday. The delivery or the build date? The delivery date is okay. the 20th. Okay. Here's Michelle patiently waiting on me. Oh, you got your Hawaiian on today. I felt like a tourist in the Caribbean, so. Oh, it's also your SpongeBob on, yeah, right? Well, but, yes. But really, no SpongeBob, really, really. Okay. I my lounge fly, shrunken head, Sam, with me today. And brand new. Drink. Brand new? No, I just never had a chance to use them before. Oh, okay. It's kind of a vinyl wrap over wood frame. They've got $3 on it. 
I really have a spot in my bathroom where we could hang it. I have owls on my shower curtain. I like owls. All Don can do is say, please let's not. Uh, be honest and kind, love one another. Count your blessings, stay anchored, and laugh and enjoy life. Very sweet. Yeah. Making a world of difference. Oftentimes we see spoons or bells that are turned in and today is bell day. How cute is that? It reminds me of all the Lego frozen pieces. I don't see the little people that go with it though. Wood but not silk. Huh, I don't think I've noticed them before. Pretty cool. We're filling the cart. We are, we are. Coming around the corner excited and what are you going to do with that? Guess what's in the basket? I don't know what's in the basket. My brother! <laughs> You ever see basket case with Belial? No. <laughs> That's cute. I'm thinking I should. Oh my god. Uh, oh, Ten dollars. Aw, but it is a big basket. Well, if you need trays, today's your day because they have a lot of commercial restaurant trays in blue. So it's the weekly Harry Potter find along with the uh, Ariel and Connor are on their way to Japan spring of 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Horror so summer. Summer. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking for appropriate attire. Here's a Whoa, tribute to all the people out there that rescue. Get outside, explore. But it's too small, but I want it. Darn it. No one at my house can fit in that. Now look, I never have time for it, but I still like my Wii Fit, my balance board. We're all loaded up now. I've got one more thing for her. I had such a great time with you today, girl. Me too. I love you. <laughs> love you. And look at what she came out with. We, we may have seen it through the back plastic to the back area and um, had to ask about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we went into Thriftronics and Michelle got a... A vacuum for the steps. It's a, a shark. It's a shark. A... Um, oh sewing machine because the kids are doing Halloween costumes and sometimes they need to sew something. Uh, yep, the Little Mermaid, Mermaid record. record. Uh -huh. And this is Slimer yes. from Ghostbusters. Yeah. I got Sam a Cousinart ice cream maker and they gave us an extra 10% off. They're really trying to get people to go in that store. If you need an iron, an instant pot, an air fryer, a lamp, God help you if you need a lamp. Perfect. You need to go visit them. Gorgeous yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, till next week. Till next week, Marianne. I love you. Love you too. Yeah. So after I left, you came back out and put her back into service mode. Yeah, because I had watched the video. Okay, and it sort of told you where to navigate to to More look less, at yeah, it, twelve volt and high voltage stuff. Right. I checked the um, the high voltage stuff and the charging stuff right and it's all green so it doesn't show any errors or no no errors now you notice that the battery pack was orange the high voltage battery pack but i don't know that that's really an indication i think that's how it highlights the components uh so um the video basically implied that um the isolation resistance uh could be a little low uh, the example they had it was over four 4,000 K, over four mega ohms. Uh, this our mine's Ruby's at 2,100 joules. Uh, joules is at 2.1 mega ohms versus four mega ohms. So uh, that's the difference. So maybe it's a little low there because that's what it says. It's more like uh, the the car says uh, you know it's safe to drive. Uh, top speed and power are reduced. Uh, it may not go on the next drive. So I drove it. Uh, basically out to the street uh, and um, parked it, got out of the car, got back in the car, and drove it away. So I guess it's going to be okay to drive uh, to the service center. In other words, I don't, have, I don't think we'll have to go Right. To Don, Don wanted to take her out while I was on my way home from Guardian Angel just in case she failed in the middle of the driveway so Ruby wouldn't get, and I wouldn't get blocked in. Right, because if, if the car, that's the only thing really bad about our driveway, if a car dies on the driveway, <laughs> uh, you're not going to get any other car out. And that's why during like ice storms and stuff like that, if I really need to go somewhere, I get the GMC out or put something out of the street. Something out of the street, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you can't get down that hill when it's covered with ice. 
And Don wanted you to know that today is the anniversary of the moon landing, oh, and yeah, he put on 20. his he put on his NASA shirt today to show his Jules' third birthday. Yeah, three years old, and <laughs> the 49th uh, moon landing. Uh, well, it can't yeah. be 69. It, it can't be 40. Uh, it's only 23. Uh, okay. You say so. No. How many years is it now? I think it's 49. The next year will be. Um, maybe I got my math wrong. Your math's wrong. We'd have to be on yeah. an eight or or a yeah. zero to be yeah. 49. That's yeah. Right. So 44th. Yeah. Uh, or yeah, 40. <laughs> so, uh, Alexa, subtract. 54. <laughs> Alexa, subtract 1969 from 2023. 54. Yeah, 54. Okay. That's fine. Well, anyway, <laughs> next year is going to be 55 years. Oh, forgive us. We, yeah, got, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We really can't do math, we promise. Well, I think. Well, I you're usually much better at it yeah. than me, even though I'm the one that's officially supposed to know about math. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I said all that just to say I'm going to go in there and open a service ticket and upload the pictures to the ticket that I took of the service console. Right. And, uh, you know, we hoped when we went to service mode this morning, we were just going to say confirmation the 12 volts basically dead and something simple. And it turned a little more, I guess, complicated. Well, well, I mean, I, I still wouldn't swear it's not the 12 volt, oh, but yeah, it's not. Knows? But the 12 volt was putting out 13. It well, looked okay. Well, the guys, the, the Reddits and the things like that said that this is a drive unit. Okay. The, the, ice, the, the, the isolation issue is the drive unit. Okay. So two Sterilite storage, that's going to Ariel. It says it's a perfect day, but she's the one that gets all the journals. Actually, I meant to, it's brand new. I meant to hand it to Michelle. So I went back and I found the other set in pink. Uh, there's stuff in there. Could have warned you. So the two storage containers were four bucks a piece. Storage is expensive now. I don't mind washing it. That's going to go on the second. Hold it up. You're not just looking at it. You're also displaying it higher. There you go. It's a little birdhouse thing. It's going on that other metal hook you made me. Remember, you? I had I had one wind chime and one not wind chime. And then I kind of got yeah. That's going out in a fairy garden thing. It's a uh, got a windmill. All these things were, these three things and a hook, another hook, were a dollar. Yeah, I might actually put it, that might have been the hook for it. And I guess when they put it out on the floor, they didn't know. I did notice they were not in the same spot, and I did notice the blue paint was pretty unique. So yes, that can go upstairs, just like that, the box and the bins. Yeah. Um, but come back. Not yet. <laughs> I'm going to drop kick him in a minute <laughs> well i thought miss michelle was the one you went shopping with that's right so another and i particularly want these storage bins so i got a pair of new balance leggings yeah name brand stuff and a shirt we need to wash that red one from a week ago and throw that one in with the red one i think it'll be fine so, yes, shirt. And, oh, this is the New Balance pair. The other pair was Tech Gear. This is the New Balance pair. The funky colors with yeah, the pink really? and stuff. Yep. Snazzy. Yep. I found for the, the Nespresso and double insulated clear coffee cup for a dollar. Yeah. So, um, that one I'll cup. That. Yeah, that one cup I bought was a little too small. This one's bigger. That's oh, all gorgeous. Yeah, that's going to Ariel along with the little journal. Hello, gorgeous. Yes. Starbucks coffee cup. This one has paw prints on it. If you look really close, and Michelle and I think when you put hot water in it, the paw prints are going to turn a color. Oh, I so see for a prints. dollar, we're gonna we needed to know, mm -hmm. and that's for Sam. That and the ice cream maker out in the car, and here's my Cousin art um handheld blender thing 
I'm very excited about that because I used to use one all the time, a Sunbeam one, and it lasted for 10, 15 years and then the plastic broke. Yeah. But it had a great life, so I'm hoping this one will be primo for me. I like Cousin Art stuff. This is Sam. Sam's, so yeah, back to Ruby. So I scheduled the service appointment. Currently it's August 9th, which is like two weeks out. Three weeks. It's a long time. It's a long time for a car that basically is not drivable. We sh probably shouldn't take it anywhere. Right. We oh. are not going to go. But on. you know, that'll fix it. It'll have to get towed up there and then they'll, yeah. then they'll start work on it sooner. Right. Oh. Uh, uh, but, right, so the bottom line is we'll be very co uh, cognizant of where we drive it. Uh, but uh, it was interesting when we scheduled a service ticket. It actually showed it up on the service screen. When I clicked service, the alert, the alert it, it had the alert up there, and I clicked on that to enter the service ticket. And um, I put a description in and, and attached some of the photos. So we'll see. So I didn't have to pick body damage. It just knew this just, alert and it categorized that's it. That's right. So the because no, normally, if I remember correctly, when you're scheduling, they ask you, "Well, you want tires? You want body damage? Yeah, want, yeah, yeah, yeah." Something like that. So I did. All those screens were skipped, and it simply had the alert and went straight in. Okay. So we're at 66 hours and 12 minutes, and I'm hungry. Yeah. Okay. Well. I'm thinking we're eating. Sure, we can do that. Uh, we'll check our blood sugar and then we eat. Yeah. But uh, one last thing I'm going to do is, or Marianne's going to do, because she's my social media phone operator person. I can't believe she actually let me do it. Uh, um, I'll have her check every day and try to manage the appointment because they have holes that open up. Right. Yeah. And if you keep on checking, you, you might can you get in checking, sooner. That's yep. right. Yep. We ate, we napped, at least I did. I finished yesterday's video edit and now I'm gonna work on my build for a while. It's 6.45 though and the Triangle Virtual Meetup is starting in 15 minutes, so I'll probably dial into that, but keep on working. So I've got the um, back half done and this is where the dome goes over top of this part and I did some of the side um, just to make sure the spacing was going to work. I think I've got this set up right for the arches. You've got to have studs on both sides of the window, one for each arch and then here's the rest of the, the build. Um, I need to look for this piece in dark bluish gray. I, I had a bag of them with white, black, and light bluish gray. Um, but I've got a, I got a couple places I can look upstairs. I probably don't have it. Um, but it won't, you know, stop me from building for now anyway. 
coming along pretty cool, huh? It's going to be massive. There's trees that go in up here. And, um, you know, with as big as this is now, I'm almost thinking I should have a, maybe another tree over here. But, I don't know. There was a picnic blanket that came in the original set, um, a family. And that was not on here after the rebuild. So I might put the picnic blanket in this corner. You know, two families sitting enjoying the pond, the tree, the shade. Um, we'll see.